Venom is one of those words that I would say most people immediately react to. They're scared of it, they think it's something to be feared, and that's valid. But conversely, venom is the way that nature has evolved to combat predators and to incapacitate prey. I'm really excited about the venom exhibit because it features a lot of my favorite creatures. I think most of the time when people think about venom, they think about snakes. On the other hand, terrestrial arthropods, which includes bees and scorpions and spiders and all sorts of animals that have an exoskeleton and six to eight legs, or maybe more, are venomous. Fishing spiders are found all around the globe. There's over 100 species of them. They tend to congregate and hunt around water sources, and so they have some special adaptations that have allowed them to take advantage of aquatic prey. It's quite shocking when people make these observations of fishing spiders eating frogs or tadpoles or fish. They use their venom almost exclusively for prey capture, and their venom has a few components. One of those components is to disable their prey, so to keep it from squirming around while they're trying to eat it. And they also have some components in their venom that digest their prey, and they basically liquefy the cells and then slurp it up as a liquid meal. The species we have is called the Okefenokee fishing spider, so they are one of the largest species in the United States. I know how to handle them or how to work around them so they don't get stressed. And if I were to receive a bite from a fishing spider, it wouldn't be particularly harmful. It's probably similar to what a bee sting might feel like. The vast majority of venomous animals are really not all that harmful to us. Venom is a chemical substance produced by animals to solve a problem. It can do things like stop nerves from communicating with each other, which could be developed into a painkiller. It can do things like force nerves to talk to each other, and that could be really useful in diseases like Alzheimer's or MS or Parkinson's. So there's all these ways that nature has invented solutions, and if we can figure out how to harness those solutions, then there's a whole lot of potential out there.